the lady was getting her eyelashes done, so she had cash for a hundred dollar bill, and I didn't have to use my car to go back to the bank or nothing like that. Which thank goodness she had to get her eyelashes done. But anyway, the adventures in my life. So anyway, got that done and came home and got my vehicle and then got the yellow paint off my car. So. If you go into an apartment complex in Reno, <laughs> don't park in someone's spot. <laughs> or like me, park in someone's spot that's going to call upon you. Yeah. But anyway, it was all a blessing. It all got worked out. I was able to pay my co-worker back that night. And he was with, not without his money for 24 hours. And so it was a blessing. And guess what? My registration was in my car. It was in the back seat because I had put it in there. But it wasn't in my glove box. So anyway, it made me hunt my house. And look for it in the house, and it was in the car the whole time. <laughs> anyway, it was a blessing all the way through, and thank God, but a lesson learned for myself. Okay, I'm glad that someone learned something from my mistake. I'm going to take it now. I'm going to it. You know, for those of us who were criminals, we didn't bother us when they took our stuff. <laughs> I thought someone stole my car, Matt, because it was a car parked out in the apartment complex. There was some, you know, for guy me, standing out there, so I was like, oh my gosh, they, they stole my car. For me, it would have been, I, I just forgot where I put it. <laughs> no, I, I, <laughs> I, visited, I visited five hospitals one day. I was visiting different people in different hospitals, and I came out of the last hospital. I had no idea where my car was. <laughs> and it was like a five-story there at Washoe. Um, yeah. You know? And I didn't know which story it was on. Yeah, so I thought, oh, praise the Lord. All things work together for good. So I started walking around the parking lot, you know. It was only on the second floor. Yeah, that's what I tried. I tried the clicker thing to start my car. It did not work. They have taken it. So turn with me to Genesis, the first chapter. We're going to talk about beginnings today. I saw a Persian County Sheriff's car this week, and it said on the back of it, In God We Trust. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I see a lot of semis with godly step on it. Yeah, I see yeah, semis, but uh, this is a police car from Purdue oh, County. Oh, police car? Wow. A police car from I'm surprised County. they let something like that. You know, that's where, I think that's where we uh, uh, get off. We can do whatever we think of police in this yeah. country. You just forget. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's for the common good. Yes. If you do it for the common bad, then it's it's not right, but if you do something for the common good and they tell you it's wrong, then they're wrong for telling you it's wrong. Yes, right. yeah. And it's okay to say, no, 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 this is really the way it is. Right. You can actually stand up. You got some of you people were raised in the 60s, man. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Does that mean here? Yeah. Don't you remember? <laughs> huh? On Cottonwood Elementary's um, board, you know, that board. It says, have a blessed day. Good. Good. Praise the Lord. I believe there's new beginnings. Amen. Amen. Happening all through our country. And all through the world, actually. Because all these crazy things, what's happening, people are turning to God, finally. They realize that mankind has screwed things up so well <laughs> that there ain't no getting it together from here on out. Outside of God, we are really toast. Right. Yeah. So I'm kind of praising the Lord here because people are turning to God by the millions. Amen. Once you know that, there is revival yes. going on in the nation. Because right. here, most, uh, a lot of people I know probably, I don't know, 70% are being raised by uh, a single parent who had a single parent who had a single parent. Mm -hmm. wow. And there are no dads in the homes, mm -hmm. hardly any. So we're having ladies who are mad at their men who were raised by people that were mad at their men. And now they come out here and now the, the men are looked at as some kind of idiots and they, they can't do anything at all. And look at the heroes on TV, guys. They're all women. They got women beating up men. Yes, and children. Cute women. <laughs> Not big, big, strong women. Little tiny, cute women, knocking the crap out of some great big guy. That does not happen. No, no. 
I thought I'd throw that out. <laughs> Should I get my hobby? Oh, where's my, where's my little thing? No. <laughs> Genesis 1. Hallelujah. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Woo! In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And I want you to know, God created the heavens and the earth before he ever spoke light into existence. Isn't that good? So he created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was where men were going to dwell. So God thought about you before he spoke light into existence. I mean, this God that we are calling upon here is a God who cares so much. He thought thoughts about you right here, right now, before he ever created light. Before he ever separated light from darkness. Before he ever created dry ground. Because the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. Now, I don't know how this works, but he said he had to separate the light from the darkness. Maybe you can get that. I don't get it. <laughs> Maybe because he figured it out. And now we can't figure it out any other way because there was never any other way for us. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but I just, all right. So God created the heavens and the earth. Now, if that's true, if God created the heavens and the earth, and then in 126, he says, and God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, birds of the air, over every cattle, over the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them, and God blessed them. And said, be fruitful and multiply. Here's God, he creates man, he creates this thing, and he makes the earth all groovy, and then he puts mankind on it. If this is true, then we're going to have to answer to a creator. Mm -hmm. If this isn't true, you don't have to answer to anybody. God's got things that he needs us to do. Why did God make the Ten Commandments? Just show us. Okay. Okay. The the law was given so that sin would become exceedingly sinful, so that we know we need to save it. Yes. Hallelujah. That's why he created it. Uh what? God well, forgive me, but God made the Ten Commandments because not directly identified as such, but the embodiment of the Ten Commandments is the law of Christ. The that's law right. of harmlessness, yeah, the law right. of love. So, when God created the Ten Commandments, He knew that if we kept them, we'd be happy campers. Okay, He knew if, if we broke the Ten Commandments, we wouldn't be happy. So God didn't make the Ten Commandments to put you under His thumb. He created the Ten Commandments to set you free into a life of liberty. And then, mankind, in His wonderful state of smartness decided <laughs> that the only thing that God told him he couldn't do he was going to do. Yeah. He said you can eat freely of every tree in the garden. Now how about you guys? Can you eat freely? Yeah. Yeah. No yes. you can't. No? no you get too fat and you get a heart attack. <laughs> 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 okay, that's too <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm in good shape for the shape I'm in. Anyway, God made us so we could eat freely of everything. Okay, just eat as much as you want. This is, but the tree in the midst of the garden, you shall not eat. Right. And so, Eve snuck out. <laughs> I don't know what she was doing by herself, but her husband wasn't there yet. And she started talking to the serpent. Now the serpent was beautiful. He is cunning, very cunning. The Bible says, and he, she, he says, check out this fruit. She says, no, we can't eat that. We can't eat that. We can't even touch it unless we're going to die. So she added a little to the commandment. Don't we do that when we get religious? You know, we take what God says and add, add 16, 17 things to it. You know, the, the Pharisees, when they finally came in, made that, made that 50 laws about eating food. Anyway, it's what mankind is like. So she said, we can't eat it unless, he said, you ain't going to die, man. You're going to be like God you eat that fruit. Like God. The point is, she was already like God. He made her in his image after his likeness. She was already like God. The enemy, the serpent, wanted her down a notch. Woo! 
fruit, yeah. He watered her down a notch, so he offered her the fruit, so she eats the fruit. And then her husband comes up, and she gives him some, and like an idiot, he listens to her and eats the fruit too. So is yeah. life. Yeah, and God shows up, he says, Adam, where are you? Like he didn't know. Uh -huh. Yeah. Omniscient, omnipresent. Adam, where are you? I'm over here behind the bush, because I'm naked. Who told you? Adam, who told you he was naked? The woman that you gave to me with me. She gave me the fruit. I ate it. She turns to the woman and says, what have you done? She says, the devil made me do it. <laughs> right? Isn't it like that today? The devil made me do it. I'm just, I have a demon on me. I just can't help it. It's, oh, the enemy's been attacking me all week. I just don't know what to do. The devil is all over. Knock that crap off. Right. If you're a Christian, you have authority yes. over the enemy. You don't have to put up with his stuff. You don't have to put up with his lies and his cheating and things like that. You just don't know how. You don't have to. No. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad I don't have yeah. to be angry with anybody. <laughs> so anyway, he created all these things. In Isaiah 40, he says, "I'm going to just go over there because I like it." I shared this with a bunch of guys one time, and they, they thought I was full of crap. So, in Isaiah 40, in the 28th verse, it says, Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Ooh, I like that. But I like it where he says, have you not known and have you not heard? In this country, almost everybody has heard unless you're very young. Some of the very young have never heard that God created the heavens and the earth. They, if you say Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they're going to think you're talking about their neighbor. Yeah. They don't know who Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is. They have no idea. So, but most of you are old enough, you heard somewhere along the line yes, yeah. that God created the heavens right. and the earth. Now, I'm somewhat of a scientist, and I kind of got into creation at one time, or evolution. And I want you to know evolution just does not work. <laughs> it just does not work. In fact, I showed a tape here one time, creation versus evolution. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Yes. I mean, if, <laughs> you have to have a lot of faith to believe. Oh, it's ludicrous. I just, it, if the guy asked him, it's just, it's just, the one point he made, I would like to, you to name one transitional species that went, went from one species to the next. Oh, yeah. You know, we went from a, a, a fish, yeah, amoeba, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to come out, humans. Mm -hmm. But he says, just one transitional species. And they were named, no. And they were naming the, uh, they were naming the birds on the Galapagos Islands, you know, they're okay and all that stuff. But he says, no, I want one transitional species. Well, I could give you a thousand. These are professors Is it? that are saying this. I could give you a thousand. He says, I just want one. He says, uh, I, can, well, I can name thousands. He says, just name one. And none of them, not one of them, could give them one transitional species. Why? Because there ain't none. <laughs> Never has a bird turned into a cat. Never, doesn't that sound ludicrous? Yeah. Okay, never has a chicken turned into a lion. Yeah, right. Never has an amoeba turned into a man. Yeah. God created. Yes. God created. And we could go on and on and on. Sure I'm not going to go on and on and on. Yeah. 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 In junior high, science teacher taught us yeah. that species don't cross. Don't. Species don't cross. So science <laughs> no avoids the whole thing. Science says if you try to cross a dog and a cat, you don't come out with a dat. <laughs> or a cog. <laughs> it can't happen. It can't happen. So even scientifically, if you're trying to figure this out, it doesn't work. So either God created it or it just happened. 
I want you to know, if something has a design, there's a designer. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I look around, I, I see the stars, they're not running into each other. Right. They're still going around the sun, it's still tipped at the, just perfect angle. Still perfect. Just the, the ozone is still there, holding the air in. You know, uh, okay. Psalm 102 says, you of old laid the foundations of the earth. Yes. And I was going to go through that whole thing about, uh, you may eat freely, but I already did that. Okay. Now, in the third chapter of Genesis, oh, this is good, I like this part. In the third chapter of Genesis, in the 14th verse, 14th verse, <clears throat> Okay, let's read the 13th just so it uh, gets in context. And the Lord said to the woman, What is this that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate it. Mm -hmm. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, yes. more than every beast of the field. On your belly mm -hmm. you shall go, and you shall eat dust mm -hmm. all the days of your life. Hallelujah. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Isn't that good? Yes. Oh my gosh. On your belly you shall go. You know, in Romans 16, 19 and 20 says, you shall crush Satan under your feet yes. shortly. Yes. I want you to know that this had to do with the woman's seed. Okay, so yes. women had to be in on this deal. Yes. So don't get on the women so much that you think they ate the fruit and you... And, uh, I, I read it what it says in Ephesians. <laughs> I'm not going to go into that. All right. So between your herd seed and her seed, the enemy is under your feet. Okay? So I, I'm not going to go into that too much. So that's one of the beginnings. So go to John 1 with me. We'll see another beginning. Oh, yeah. John, the first chapter. We'll read 1 through 4, and then we'll read 12. And I'm going to do this in order. In John 1, 1. In the beginning, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the light was the light of men. I want you to know when it says Word there, it's talking about Jesus Christ. So if we go over to the 12th verse, it says, uh, 11th verse, it says, He came to His own, and His own did not receive Him, but as many as received Him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we see here that Jesus, things were created through him. In the beginning he was there. After all, he is the Alpha and the Omega. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it says there, to those who received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God. Lots and lots and lots of people have heard about Jesus. Lots and lots of people believe Jesus is the Son of God. But they refuse in their lives to receive Him as their Lord and Savior. It takes reception to have a gift. Right. If I was going to give you my glasses, the only way you get my glasses is if you come and got them. Because I ain't going to bring them to you. <laughs> it's like God brought us salvation. And all we have to do is receive it. And I'll get into that a little later. Because here we are. We can believe that God made everything out of nothing, maybe. But to think that He could make something out of my life, yeah, come on. we just can't believe that. Right. The God who spoke the universe into existence, just, you know, I've done so many things wrong, He just can't forgive me. Or I just, that's, that's hard to believe, that He could just come inside me and help me. I don't know about you, but I've been educated a lot. I've got a lot of thoughts inside of me, and most of those thoughts changed my life. Mm -hmm. yes. A lot of those thoughts changed my life, but Amen. never, never, never until I accepted Jesus as my Lord did my thoughts come from a different source. Amen. 
His Holy Spirit came in me and I started understanding things different than I used to. We started understanding the spiritual realm that I didn't know anything about. I didn't know anything about it. Okay, so, made something out of nothing. Jesus said, unless a grain of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. So here we have another beginning. In order to have a beginning, it necessitates an end. An end of something, the beginning of something else. I want you to know when you woke up this morning, it was the end of 2022. Yes. It was the beginning of 2023. Yes. So something had to end to start. Yes. Jesus said when he first came, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent just means turn around, go a different way. So there has to be an ending of things. There has to be a, a changing of things. In fact, when Jesus came to the end of his life, oh, talk about starts and finishes, he came to the end of the, in the end of his life, he was on the cross, like that, and he says, uh, he says, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? And he said, it is finished. It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. In other words, he bowed his head and died. So there was an ending there. Now, in Jesus Christ Superstar, if you've ever watched that, yeah. in a play or a movie or anything like that, they leave him on the cross. And everybody walks away, all bummed out. And I thought, I really liked it up till then. Yeah. <laughs> right? They go, what's a buzz? Tell me what's happening. What's a buzz? Tell me what's Remember that? The whole Jesus Christ superstar. Anyway, but they left him on the cross. I want you to know he didn't stay there. That's right. He did not stay on the cross. The crown of thorns they gave him was just a little touch of time. The next thing he had was a crown. A crown of authority over all the world. Okay. So there's, there's an end and there's a beginning. So, uh, talking of beginnings. Because each one of us needs to have a beginning. It said right, right there in the first chapter of John, it says, uh, to those who received him, to them he gave the power to become children of God. Amen. Okay, so Paul the Apostle had a beginning. Now he was a Pharisee, learned a lot, knew a lot. Smarter than most guys his age, smarter than most people in Israel at that point in time because he was a Pharisee. But he had a start. God knocked him off his horse. <laughs> Blinded him and told him, I'm, I'm going to show you what things you got to suffer from my namesake. He was killing Christians. He was agreeing with people who are killing Christians. Yes. God knocks him off his horse. The guy goes and prays for him. The scales fall off his eyes. And now he's a believer. He was once a persecutor. Now he's a preacher of the very one he persecuted. <laughs> Now there's an end and there's a beginning. Yes, absolutely. Some of you in this place have had beginnings like that. Yes. Some of you went from real sinners to actual saints. Yeah. You see my halo? What another guy? How about Elijah? Elijah, prophet of God, prophesies these things. He's on the run. He goes to a cave out in the wilderness. And he goes in there and God says, go in the cave. And a, a, a huge wind comes by and breaks rocks in pieces. Breaks rocks in pieces. God wasn't in the wind. And then a huge fire comes by and just wipes out the whole place. Just what God wasn't in the fire. But then he said he heard a still small voice. And he wrapped his head in a in his tur turban or whatever it was, and went out, and God spoke to him. I want you to know, a lot of people are waiting for a bolt of lightning mm -hmm. to hit a tree and form a cross. You know? And, yeah. Oh, and then I heard, you know, if, you, if that's what you're waiting for, maybe it won't come. Oh, yeah. But God is speaking, even right now, the Holy Spirit speaking in our lives. Yes. Not only some who don't believe, but those who do believe have a new start today. Come on. That's right. I have a new start today. That's right. Amen. So you can, and where do you get a new start? I want you to know it's at the cross of Jesus Christ. Right. That's where your new start begins. Whether you're, you've never known Jesus Christ or whether you've known him and you're, you've done your own thing and here you are like a, you know, 
Of course, I've never experienced that, so I just can't understand. <laughs> that was facetious, by the way. So, I'm going to read something out of Luke. Luke, the 8th eighth chapter. And I haven't been talking very long, so I'm trying not to hurry. Sometimes I get in a hurry. This is talking about the seeds, okay? He spoke a parable to him. Now he's going to explain it to his disciples. He says, now <coughs> the parable is this. The seed sown is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear the word. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their heart, lest they should believe and be saved. <laughs> Two, the ones on the rocks are those who, when they hear, they receive the word with joy, and these have no root in them, who believe for yet a while, in a time of temptation comes, they fall away. Uh-oh. Now the ones that fell among the thorns are those, when they have heard, go out, uh, have heard, they go out and are choked by the cares, riches, and the pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on good ground are those, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep and bear fruit with patience. Ooh. I like that thing where it says, the ones that fell on good ground are those who have heard the word with a noble and good heart. Amen. I know a lot of people who don't, don't believe, but they have noble and good hearts. There's lots of people walking around with noble and good hearts. Just because they don't believe in Jesus doesn't mean they don't have a noble and good heart. Right. In fact, the Bible says, go tell these things to good man. Mm -hmm. So they'll tell others also. We don't only go after the idiots and the crazy people and the, and the, the drunks and the stoners and the weirdos. Right. That's right, I'm talking about y'all. <laughs> all right. I'm weird. It's all right. Yeah, go on. Okay. But, but each one of you that I've yeah, talked to and seen to change over the years exactly. have noble and good hearts. Yeah. You just didn't know how to get it done. That's right. You needed help. Yes. You needed help. So, let's keep going. Okay, you have need of endurance, don't you? Ooh. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's good. Now I want to go back here. Go to the first page instead of the last one. <clears throat> We need to have the ability to be with ourselves when we're all by ourselves. Without anger, bitterness, self-loathing, hatred, envy, whatever, okay? The gospel of grace creates an intense longing inside of us for the things of God. And at the same time, it creates a resentment inside of us. Why? Because pride comes. Man, I'll give and give. I'll become a martyr. I'll do anything. Show me 75 spiritual push-ups that I got to do, okay? But humiliate me on the level of the most hell-bound sinner and tell me to be right with God. All I need to do is accept the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. That's a little too much. Oh, you mean I'm on the same level as Hitler? Come on, Or I'm on the same level as... Whoever you can think of in your neighborhood that you don't like. Good word. That's a good word. <laughs> Isn't that a good word? Yes. You, okay. You can't win or deserve the favor of God. Right. That's it's right. not possible. Either receive it as a gift of grace or do without it. Mm -hmm. It's just That's as it. simple as that. That's it. It's a thing called surrender. You surrender our lives to Jesus Christ, and then the Holy Spirit comes and gives us the power to live a life worthy of the calling we're called with. Isn't that exciting? Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes, it is. It says in Romans 3.24, we are being justified freely by His grace, and we have peace with God because of it. Justified freely by grace. Yes. In Ephesians 2, it says, by grace we are saved through faith. That not of ourselves, it's a gift of God, and not of works, lest any man should boast before God. Yes. Woo! We get to the place, yeah, where we think we can deserve something. Especially when you've been walking with God for a while, and then you screw up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come on. They feel really bad. 
I remember going to work one time. The first time I sinned, I think I went three years without sinning. Well, I thought I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, I was feeling pretty holy anyway. And I, and, I, and I sinned. I knew I sinned, so I went to work. I thought, yep. So one of you guys again. <laughs> Here I am going to hell again. I was bummed out, right? And it was my habit to take half of my lunch and pray and get in the Word and, and then go eat. So it was a habit. So I sat down, so I read the Word, and the Word was the prodigal son. Mm. Oh, wow. He took all his stuff and went to riotous living and did so many things bad and come back to his dad. He, he was going to explain to his dad how he just wanted to be a servant. His father came running out to him. Yes. yes. Came running out to him, put a ring on his finger, put a robe over and says, Let's kill the fatted cat! My boy is back, he was dead, he's alive, he was lost, he's found. Bring him, come on! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Isn't that good? Yes. Man, I went back to work going. <laughs> <laughs> They ask me, what did you read today? Oh, man. <laughs> the guys at work, they knew I was over there reading something, so they asked me these things. I was bawling like a stinking baby, you know. I thought I was dead, and then I was alive again. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. And not only alive, but... Oh, yeah, and then, and then I realized what grace was actually was. Because when I was all righteous and holy, I didn't need grace. Yeah. But when I... When I blew it, yeah. and I knew I'd blown it, then I needed grace from God. Yes. And man, he opened it up big time. He does. He just went, whoa, here you go. He does. I thought, wow. And what does that do for me? It doesn't give me the privilege to go sin again. Yeah. It causes me this inside thing that says, I never want to do anything wrong again in my life. <laughs> of course, I did a couple times after that. But, but it just, it just causes me to do that. Now, the love of God keeps me from a lot more sin than the Absolutely. fear of God. Amen. But, but although the fear of God does keep us away from a lot of evil. Yes. Yes. Why don't you know that? Just know that God is God. Yeah. I mean, He's my creator. He's the one who spoke life into sight. It, it keeps me. I, what, what do I want? What don't I want to lose? It's not that He's going to punish me now that I'm a Christian. I'm in His family. He's not going to beat me to death. Right. But he'll, he'll discipline me, and I don't want to lose the anointing. Yeah. I don't want to lose the, the sense of his presence. Right. Right. I don't want to lose that, that peace and the joy right. and the power that he gives me to live. I don't want to lose those things. So I, 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 I endeavor to keep my act together. Amen. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. I, don't like, I don't like being feeling weird. Yeah. So... So, coming to the end here, in the 22nd chapter of the Revelation, by the way, that is the last chapter in the Bible. 22. The last chapter in the Bible, right before all these words. Here, my God. Where is it? I go in the Bible's and then there's a whole book after the book. Okay, I like it. <clears throat> There's something about <clears throat> beginnings and endings. We discussed two beginnings. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So they, they were both in the beginning. The Bible says in uh, the Revelation, Jesus is the Alpha mm -hmm. and the Omega. Yes. <clears throat> he is the first and the last. Yes. He always was. And he always will be. I don't know how to explain that. He had no start. He'll have no end. He's just God. That's how he can create. And he has decided to be good. You know, he could have decided like Zeus and them guys to be bitter and angry and throw lightning bolts and kill people and come and, you know, all those terrible things. But he didn't. He decided to be good and he was very good. And he made creation good. If you haven't been outside on a sunrise around here, you, wow. Yep, I went out the other night and the stars were so bright. Yes. You know when it rains and the snows yes. and stuff like that, it cleans out the sky. Yes. I went way the heck out where it's really dark. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I realized what dark was one time when I went out to Tonopah. I was out by Eastgate. No, not Eastgate. That other place out there. On the corner. Anyway, I was out there. And I had to pee. So I stopped in the middle of the road. And I had a yellow pickup at the time. Right? Yellow. Jeep. So I got out of my pickup. I closed the door. And I turned around. And I peed. And I turned around. I couldn't see my Jeep. Oh, I thought. Uh, okay. <laughs> it was a very weird feel because it was cloudy and it was nighttime and there was no light. There was nothing from the ground reflecting off and the stars and the moon could not get through. It was utterly dark. It was like being in a cave. And I realized what darkness was. And I thought, well, okay. Because, you know, in a city, you don't know what darkness is unless you get in an elevator and the lights go out. So, talking about beginnings and endings, this is about an ending. In Revelation 22, 7, 12, and 20, it says the same thing. So why does somebody repeat something? Because maybe we weren't listening the first time? Amen. One, two, three. You know, we get that to our kids. I never did that. I was a one guy. Tell you watch, do it, or die. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, but we say, sweetheart, you need to get up. That's what I did to my kids. Good morning. Hey, guys, 15 minutes. They just lay there. Hey, guys, 10 minutes. They just lay there. Hey, guys, five minutes, gotta get up. Five minutes. One second after the time I told them to get up. I poured a glass of water on it. I want you to know that only happened once. But, but Floyd and John would stay in bed till three seconds were ready to go and then pop out of bed. They didn't like the water, but they were going to stay there as long as they could. Isn't that human nature? They'll go as much as we can. But it says, and the seventh verse says, Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Oh. The twelfth verse says, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give everyone according to his works. Mm -hmm. And then in the twentieth verse he says, He who testifies these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. The word is Maranatha. Mm -hmm. It means the Lord comes or the Lord is coming. Mm -hmm. yes. So Jesus came to earth, lived a perfect life, died on a cross, raised from the dead, yes. ascended into heaven, sat down at the right hand of God. But he is coming again. Yes. And it says right here, surely I am coming quickly. In the first century when the believers got together, the greeting they would give one another is Maranatha. I got stopped on the way to, out to Holding House one time. The guy pulled me over. He says, uh, why are you going so slow? It's 3 o'clock in the morning, right? Why are you going so slow? I said, I wasn't in a hurry. <laughs> I wasn't. I was out there. What are you doing out here? I come out here to pray. I walk up this, these roads up here, pray over, pray over my people. And he says, huh? He says, does Maranatha mean anything to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He says, have a nice day. Oh, <laughs> wow. yeah. so yes, it was very cool. Because I run into Christian cops all the time. Not that I get picked up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I you know, well, they come over to my house. Not for, anyway. <laughs> Alpha and Omega. The, uh, the Lord comes, okay. Um, weren't you listening the first time as a warning? Or didn't you take it seriously the first time? Ooh, that's a good one. How about this? In Chicago, there was a bar called the Gates of Hell. And just down the street was a church called Calvary. Okay? A guy stopped the guy on the way. He wanted to get down to the bar. He says, hey, do you know the way to the bar? He says, yeah. He says, you just walk down there and go by Calvary to the Gates of Hell. <laughs> okay. So, 
for those of us who believe, just losing our peace or in favor of God, the anointing, but to those who have not chosen Jesus Christ, the first time Jesus came, he opened wide the door of grace. It is not closed, but the next time he comes, he, he'll close that door. Yes. The first time he came was to redeem mankind. The next time he comes will to judge mankind. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The first time he came, in fact, I wrote it down. The first time he came, he came to save. Yeah. The next time he comes, it will be to pronounce judgment on those who have rejected him. The only way that you go to hell is if you reject Jesus. It's not going to be your drinking. It's not going to be your smoking. It's not going to be your whatever. Yes. It's not those things that send you to hell. Yes. Jesus Christ came and paid for your sin. Yes. Sin is dealt with. The sin that will send you to hell is rejecting Jesus Christ as your only way into heaven. That's what will send you to hell. That's it. If you go to hell, you paddle your own canoe. God has done everything He can do to get you out. Okay. So this morning, as we, as I'm going to sing a song, and there'll be people up here to pray with you or whatever, and it's just not going to be a very long song. So don't worry. Okay. 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 Okay, why don't you go ahead and try to get that together, and I'll, I'll do that. Yes. Today's uh, January 1st, 2023, correct? Yep. Yeah. Okay, my question A.D. A.D., in the year of our Lord. That's what it means. Anno Domini. It means in the year of our Lord. Okay, where's before Christ? B.C. Before Christ. And then day one. What was day one? Uh, when Jesus day Christ died. When that? Jesus Christ died on the cross. That's that's day one. I figured this out. Okay. So it's 2011 years. That's 22 and 33. It's 11. You, you can do the math later. Well, hang on just a second, you guys. Okay. Hang on just a second. So Lord, we thank you for allowing us to give today. And we want to we want to worship you in this. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to do this. And we do this in honor to our King. As worship in Jesus' name, Amen. And uh, yeah, the lights are still on, so Chris's uh, tie check didn't bounce for us. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I was wondering. There are serving. There are consequences. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, Tony's gonna say something about communion. Thank you. Yes. So, um, interesting enough, Pastor God gave me um, a scripture, which was Revelation, uh, where God is coming back. Um, and behold, I am seized already there at the page. I didn't even have to find it. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. So we know that God is coming back. So the other day, I was um, uh, listening to uh, Pastor Rick Fair, his teaching on YouTube regarding the book of Revelation, the end times. And um, he was talking about uh, something that was new to me. Now, some time ago, I talked about uh, the communion um, always uh, referring to the blood. Everything, um, the blood is important. From the, um, over the doors, which is a type of salvation, because weren't they saved if they had the blood over? So it's a salva type of salvation. So the salvation we have with God, with Jesus, um, is represented by the wine and the bread. So here's what I learned from Pastor Rick, and I was like, just wow, that's so cool. Every time we take communion, we prophesy. 
we are prophesying the return of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I just said, okay, Lord, I'm going to remember that every time I take communion. I am prophesying, decreeing, and declaring your return. Mm -hmm. And I was about ready to take communion ten times a day so that he would come quicker. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, anyway, it didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> His time, not ours. But I was definitely would do it if it worked. Yes. But anyway, every time you take communion, every time you, you uh, rep it represents the blood, that is, um, and, and the body, we are prophesying the return of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So just remember that. I thought that was awesome. I never heard that before. I've heard a lot of teachings on communion, but I never heard that one before. So anyway, yeah. You want to pray over this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Lord, we prophesy. Yes. Yes. You're soon coming, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the body that was broken for us. And it was broken, Lord. You went ahead and died. So we thank you, Lord, for doing these things for us. We take this stuff, Lord, by faith, understanding that that's what you've done. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for being smarter than this cup. <laughs> and Lord, we thank you most of all for your blood. And she's right, Lord. We prophesy your soon coming. Because if you died, and you gave us this to remember you. So we remember you today, Jesus. We don't remember some dead guy. We remember somebody that rose from Amen. the dead and dies no more. So we thank you, Lord, for doing this for us, to giving us an opportunity to die no more. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm going to sing this song. And every beginning starts with a decision. If you're going to go run 10 miles today, you have to put on your tennis. You get, got to get your shorts on. But the main thing is, you got to take the first step out the door. All right? Hang on, let's wait till these guys get these things picked up. Guys, did you All right. All right. So, there's a lady over here that wanted to put in the offering, but she didn't get to the Oh, it's because the air bogarting you there. It's coming. Okay. It's still in the first. Oh, it's still there. They're busy drinking. It's only the fourth hour. It's usually. It's usually spending your money first, then drinking. So, any beginning begins with a decision. When you make a decision, you start something, okay? Myself, I need a foundational change, a fundamental change. It's like tearing down an old house and removing everything out of the way, flattening it out and making a new foundation. I saw a plan once for a 30,000 square foot house. They tore down two other houses, five, 6,000 square foot houses, and they laid it flat and they built a 30,000 square foot house. They put a million dollars into the footing. You know why? Because the footing is the most important yes, thing. That's what we build on. So as we give our lives to Christ, there's a foundational change that happens inside of us. A fundamental thing that goes on. And it's by the Spirit of God. I don't know how He did it with me, how He did it with you, but I changed on the inside. I remember changing. I woke up the next morning and I was not the same guy because I was serious. I had a noble and good heart. When I gave my life to Christ, I gave my life to Christ. That was it. Yes. That was it. No more. I'm done. I tried everything else in my life and it lasted for a little while and I go to something else. And it lasted for a little while and meditated for a while. Anyway, as a skier for a while, blue hand gliders for a while, ran for a while, did this for a while, all those things. But, when I gave my life to Christ, that was it. This yes. is God we're dealing with. Yes. So as you come today for prayer, and I'm going to sing this song, I Surrender All. Surrender means, I surrender. Yes. I surrender my life. This isn't a halfway deal. 
And so, if you're gonna, if you're gonna uh, change your life today, just come up here, and people will be here to pray for you. They really will. So I, I believe that. Me too. I'll throw peas at you. Goes <laughs> <laughs> like this. All to Jesus I surrender all to Him my feeling give. I will ever love and trust in His presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. 